Tough game Saturday in Montana. Bison versus the Grizz. Obviously, it's much easier to be a Monday morning quarterback. So I thought, hey, who better to do that than myself and Alex Egan, <laughs> my co-host for the Farmers <laughs> Union Insurance Bison football pregame show. You know, you watch this game, you think, okay, Bison, it's going to be close, young defense, but we're going to end up winning this thing. That didn't go down this week. What, what really stood out to you? Well, first off, it was a great college football game. I thought that that game was everything that ESPN, that the fans, that anybody watching college football, any casual fan of college football was geared in and tuned into that game. It was a fantastic game. It had a fantastic finish. Unfortunately, it was a finish that uh, Bison Nation wasn't all that pleased with. But uh, I think what stood out was the difference of halves. It was, it was, it really was a tale of two halves, and really it was a tale of three quarters versus the fourth quarter for the NDSU offense. Uh, Carson Wentz getting hurt there in the fourth quarter really kind of handcuffed what they could do uh, offensively with with the football. Uh, I think Coach Kleiman said it would come down to a defensive stand, and it ended up being a stand that they couldn't get that really ended up being the difference in that. And kudos to Coach Klein, because I'm sure you watched the Twitter conversation on Saturday. And so when he stood up today at his press, one of the first things he said is, look, guys, you know, us as coaches are just as much responsible for this loss as anybody on this field. I think that's what a lot of people were questioning. You know, second and seven, two minutes to go, third and seven, two minutes to go. Why not just run the rock? You got an all-conference, excuse me, all-American punter, take some time off the clock. But, hey, the pass is the pass. That's how it goes. I do want to check out uh, Mr. Wentz's injury here and show you what happened there uh, as this thing goes down. But this is the play where Carson Wentz got hurt. And you can see here he's obviously dropped back. Now, when he was running the rock, Al, I mean, you and I were talking about this. I was going, hey, this is great. You know, you got really 10 on 10 because now it's him versus a DB. But when you sit in that pocket, these are the kind of things that can happen. He got up very, very gimpy from this. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, had an impact on the rest of the game. Well, he was, uh, Coach Kleiman was asked about Mr. Wentz today at the press conference and said, hey, look, is he going to play next Saturday? Coach Kleiman was kind of doubtful, but he also had this to say about Mr. Wentz. It was a factor. Obviously, you guys could see in the first half when we have that option of him running the football as well as all the other things that we can do, um, we become a difficult offense to, to defend. When that was limited, um, we became a little bit more predictable. Kind of what you alluded to anyways, but real quickly, I mean, your thoughts on and I, I assume he's going to play, <laughs> you, you know, next you Saturday. Think he but he would be in for at least a series. I mean, Weber State is not Montana. Let's get that straight. And no offense to Weber State, they're not Montana. Weber State is a team that North Dakota State should be easily with or without Carson Wentz. And again, no disrespect to Weber State, but that's just where the programs are. Uh, I think Carson will try to play. I honestly, I, or I think that it, it's going to be him to start the game. Um, but I think Easton Stick and Cole Davis could see some snaps in that game. I think it'll be a matter of where is the game at. And if the game is close, uh, I think Coach Kleiman has to worry about a Missouri Valley football conference run more than he does um, about this, this non-conference schedule. Now, the big game is September 19th, and I guarantee you number 11 will be out there <laughs> playing against UND. But I wanted to ask you this. Uh, as a quarterback, you have to learn how to take a sack. And that was something on that play. Carson tried to stay up, and it, it, didn't, it didn't work. You, you have to learn how to take a sack and go down. And I'm sure... That's something that you don't want to do as a quarterback, but that's something you have no, to learn. No, you can how to tell do. that Carson's a competitor. There's no doubt about that. And again, I think that one of the things you learn is you mature as a quarterback. There was even a couple times, even that last drive, when he probably should have just held onto the ball, mm -hmm. you know, went down on the ground, ran some time off the clock, and he threw those two incompletions. But those are things that hopefully Coach Hedberg's going to sit down with him and say, look, man, there's times to sit there and fight for an extra yard. There's times just to go down because you're way too valuable for us throughout the entire season to worry about an ankle and you losing us five yards. So. I think we're going to see that growth from him. The big thing I'm looking for Wentz this year is, is to see the game really slow down, where now he's going to be able to anticipate, hit some open windows that maybe he didn't last year, and really show off, obviously, his arm strength as well. And I wouldn't say that this is by any means a setback. The injury is obviously a setback, but how he played isn't a setback from what we've come to expect of him. He, he ran the offense effectively. He ran um, the plays effectively. He got you know what they needed out of him, uh, except for that fourth quarter when he obviously wasn't at 100%. One other interesting thing to know from the pressure today was obviously C.J. Smith, big missing element on Saturday. I want to get your thoughts on, on the youth of the defense, but also Coach Kleiman seemed 100% certain that Smith's going to play against Weber State. Well, I think having C.J. back will be a, a added benefit. I mean, we saw some of the, the defensive backs get torched, obviously, against Montana. 
they have two NFL or CFL caliber type receivers that are going to torch pretty much anybody that they want to uh, in this in the course of the season. So to see the DBs get get beat up a little bit is kind of expected, I think, uh, from the North Dakota State side. But I asked Coach Kleiman on Sunday uh, in an interview that's up on ValleyNewsLive.com self promo. Uh, you can, I asked him <laughs> if <laughs> if he got what he expected out of his defense, and he said no. In, I, I, in a I, lot of I, words, he said no. He expected more out of what it is to be code green. <laughs> that hashtag is going to be trade. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag self promo. Hashtag self promo. All right, coming up on the, I believe it's the 12th, Saturday the 12th, yep. he'll be hosting the uh, Farmers Union Insurance, Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Somehow I'm going to be up in the booth doing color, but it's going to be a great, great Saturday. I think the Bison pregame show is on at 1.30. Mm -hmm. The game kickoff is at 2.30. You can watch it, obviously, on KVLY Saturday, September 12th. Be sure and tune in for that. Great work last Saturday. Thank you for being here tonight. Hey, it's fun. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. 0 oh, and 1. Hey, championships aren't hey, we won got that and lost. Out of the way. Exactly. Championships now aren't won and lost in week one. Let's move on to week week two, or I guess it'll to, be week uh, three. Fargo, South Texas in January. So yeah, no big deal. All right, stay with us. We'll wrap things up right after this.